Hey everybody! So today we're going to be doing an unboxing, setup, and review of the new Logitech Brio. Right now I am recording on the Logitech C920 at a 1080p, 30 frames per second. And uh, after this unboxing we'll also test it, set it up, and then I'm going to have two other videos that will be linked in the end card of this video where we'll have a 60 frames per second test between the C920 and the Brio. And I will also have a third video which is like a behind the scenes making of so people that are interested can see how I make and edit videos. Okay, so let's jump into it. Let's open this thing and we'll see what it looks like. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to get into this for a long time. Check it out. Ooh. Nice. So, for those of you, as you can see, we've got, uh, that's the Brio. And we've got this soft pad connector for the top of a monitor. And then on the back there, you can see that is a USB type C but you can also use uh, USB 2.0 and 3.0 but if you're going to record in 4k you have to use at least the USB 3.0 to be able to do streaming and recording with the 4k the 2.0 USB doesn't work very well so on the bottom we can take this off we can pop this thing right off and on the bottom there you can see that is a screw mount so that you can put it on a tripod. You can just screw it right onto a tripod like so. But if you don't want that and you want to stick it on a monitor you will need the base and that just pops right back in just like so. Also in the box we've got our cables. Don't need that. So we got here's our cables. This will be the USB connector. You can see that there. And this goes to a 3.0, but you can also plug it into a uh, 2.0. And then this is a privacy cover. So the idea of this is that you put it on your camera and then when you're not using it you can flip it down and it hides the camera so if you have it plugged in and someone hacks into your computer they can't see uh, what's on your camera but what I normally do is I just unplug the USB cable because I have it connected my 3.0 is at the top of my computer so I can just pull it off and then no one can access the camera. One of the reasons I do that instead of using these privacy flaps is because even though they can't see, if they can access the webcam, they can access the microphone. So they would be able to hear whatever is going on even if they can't see it. So I, just to be safe, I just unplug my USB cable. Um, I don't really use those privacy things, but if it's your thing, go for it. Also, it comes with this really nice case so that you can carry It's a nice little felt case and uh, you can carry it around so it's more mobile with you if you need to go record somewhere else, which is cool. So now let's go over some of the specs on this uh, Brio. You need to have at least Windows 7 or 8.1 or Windows 10, or you need a Mac OS of 10 or higher. Uh, you would need a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core 2 processor as a minimum, and two gigs of RAM as a minimum. But of course, I would highly suggest that you use higher than that, otherwise when you record, it would really bog down your memory, and it would probably end up being choppy. Uh, you need a pretty big hard drive space, especially if you're filming in the higher resolutions. 
Uh, there's the USB 2.0 you can use, but you're required to use 3.0 if you're going to do 4K. The 4K Ultra HD will record in 4K video at 30 frames per second. Uh, when recording in 1080p Full HD, you can uh, record 30 to 60 frames per second. And at 720p HD, you can record 30, 60, or 90 frames per second. This also supports multiple connection types, including USB 2.0 Type A, 3.0 Type A, and C connections. So if you do have a Type C, I would highly suggest using that. Here are my computer specs. I'm running a Windows 10 Home 64-bit. Uh, I've got 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM with an Intel Core i7 CPU processor. It's a quad core using eight logical processors, 870 by 2.93 gigahertz. And my graphics card is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 760. And I do have the drivers to the most current version. So let's see what I currently have my Logitech C920 set up as. And uh, I'm going to need my glasses for this one. <laughs> I'm kind of old now. But you can see here, this is my XSplit. This is what I use for recording. And on my webcam here, I have it to a manual configure set to a 1080p, 24 frames per second. And my video output is set to 1080p, 30 frames per second, at an MJPEG. And if we look at the input, I have my input set to right sound, even though I don't use that because I have a blue Yeti microphone that I record on. I have it set to autofocus. I do put it at right light just because I don't have enough light and so I need the extra help. And I have my auto white balance and I do set the auto flicker or anti flicker at NTSC 60 hertz. Now you may not be able to read this, it'll probably be too small, but in the top right I have it set at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second for recording. And now let's uh, go back and we'll hook up the Logitech Brio and see what we got. So we just connected the Brio and this is the default. And let's see what the default settings are at. So if we go to the Brio, for our input, this is where you have your brightness, contrast, and all of that. The only auto that you can click right now is the white balance. On the camera controls, you have your zoom, focus, exposure. Those, the focus and exposure can be auto. Everything else can't right now. And a low light compensation. On the output, we default at the 640-360. Uh, the reason my camera froze is because I'm in the configure right now. And it defaults at the, the YUY2. So you want to increase it to the 1080p for default. And you want to change the YUI2 to an MJPEG. After you apply and hit OK, then you can see that it changed. And now we can go full screen. Yay! Now it has like this weird bubble look to it, but we'll fix that. So let's go back to our output. And we can default now at the 4K. But I want to go to a QHD, which would be a 2560 by 1440. And that's what this would look like. But this is without any of the software downloaded. So now we need to download some software. 
So we go to the Logitech website and when we go into support and downloads and we look up the Logitech Brio we go to our download section this is where we download the computer settings but we also don't forget to do this you want to click on details and you want to download the background replacement this is if you have green screen or something else and you want to mess around with background replacement you have to download it there I don't know why they don't have it obvious in front right here but oh well now that we have our softwares installed this is what it looks like um, we need to set up our settings for it now if we go to our Logitech this is where we set our Logitech controls so you're not going to see the webcam here because I've got it going on XSplit right now and you can only run one software for the webcam at a time but this is where your background replacements can be if you have green screen where you can make it look like brick blur it or others you've got like casual and Chicago and living space you have a bunch of options you can also add your own background to put anything you want in the background I currently don't have a green screen so I can't show you that but it's pretty easy this is where the image is set up we have auto focus on and an auto white balance with 50-50 uh, on everything else and our settings right now we're at a 90 percent or a 90 degree I usually put it at 78 just because it shows more of the inside of my little studio thing but you can also go to a 65 degree field of view I'm going to keep it at 78 and you want to have the black background replacement widget active if you're going to use that and you have your image set to a widescreen so now if we look at the webcam, here we go. Yay! <laughs> now I have it set up the way I want it so far. I need to tweak a bit more, but I wanted to say I don't have my light on. I just have my regular light. I don't have my floodlight. And the white balance in the lighting is pretty bright, even without it. Here I'll turn it on and you can see what it looks like if I turn on the regular lamp. And this is what it looks like if I have my other light on, but it is reflecting off of the posters a bit, but it softened the light on me a bit. So we'll look at both and see which one I like later on. I now have the settings the way I want them. The camera is putting an input of QHD or 2560 by 1440 but the X split is exporting at 1080p so it's getting a better resolution or a cleaner picture even though it's a 1080p and uh, I'm liking the software it's an updated software things move a bit faster I want to play with that background see what how that works but I need a green screen first and I do like the fact that I don't have to have my lamp on anymore because the brightness from the camera itself and my one light is enough. So I'm not getting glare on these posters. And uh, I'm really liking that. I think the picture is a bit cleaner. But watch the beginning of this video and then the end of this video and you tell me which one you like better. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends! And I will see you on the next video.